We'll have a moment of silent meditation and the pledge of the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. We will call to order this meeting of the County Commission of March 18th. It's 10 o'clock. All commissioners are present. And we'll begin with consent and approval. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have 11 exonerations for $2,436.74. <clears throat> Vouchers General County Fund, $85,883.62. Cole Severance, $17,601.11. 911 19,436.39. Chestnut Ridge Park, 1,258.07. Mason Dixon Park, 332.81. Transportation Levy, 431.224. Library Levy, 105,844.84. Assessor's Valuation, $7,018.47. Purchasing Card Vouchers, General County Fund, 34,422 55, 911, 8,315, 11, Mason Dixon Park, 734,86, for a voucher total of $712,071.83. <clears throat> we have um, budget revisions. Um, actually, on the agenda, I had county commission and insurance programs, but I have pulled those. I have pulled those. We're not doing those. Um, so there's a, a state approval um, for prosecuting attorney and then the data processing is actually just an in-house budget revision not a state approval okay um, position vacancies for boards and authorities and western board of zoning appeals and mon county planning commission mon county development authority camp monthly advisory board abandoned dilapidated enforcement agency mason dixon park advisory board region six planning and development council historic landmarks commission and the mountaineer trail network authority fiduciary orders for march 18th 2020 Clarification. So we pulled the county commission uh, and the insurance programs. Correct. Uh, are we not pulling the prosecuting attorney one? Oh, I'm also? sorry. Yes. So we just have one. Just to clarify, we have one budget revision, and that's for the data processing, and that's an in-house. In-house budget revision. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, having with that change, I move that we approve. Second. Been properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't see any listed, but do we have any introductions of new employees or personnel changes? Seeing none, we'll move on to comments from the public. we we'll now open comments from the public. If you wish to speak, please come forward, identify yourself, your address, uh, and you'll have three minutes. Andrew Gaspray, Director of Planning. Just wanted to uh, follow up on the work session we had the other day in which we presented the draft uh, rollout for the, the draft subdivision. Uh, as suggested that day, by Friday, we should have the draft subdivision ordinance uh, posted on our website uh, along with the presentation that I showed you all uh, that day. Nothing has changed since then. Uh, we should have a red line of all the, the changes that uh, occurred since August available Monday, but we had to check that so that takes a little bit more time. Everything else is on schedule at least as far as we are concerned. Obviously with uh, things that are going on in the public sector, things may slide based on addressing the uh, COVID-19, but as far as we are concerned and as far as the information I have, uh, the schedule that I presented is still valid. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Seeing none, we will close comments from the public. Thank you. Pauline, do we have grants? I have requests for reimbursements for on um, the first one's the Homeland Security grant in the amount of $115,911 and then um, the Community Development Block grant in the amount of $736.77. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Thank you. Is there any correspondence? Um, actually, just one item came in received the 
January and February of 2020 um, of financial performance reports from the Transit Authority regarding their levy funds. Okay. okay. That is it for correspondence. Okay. Any unfinished business? No, sir. Seeing none, we'll move to new business. So first, a to consider for approval a resolution confirming receipt of the Mongay County Emergency Operations Plan as provided by the Mongay County Office of Emergency Management. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. B, to consider a request by Main Street Morgantown for use of the Courthouse Square on July 4th, 2020. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Thank you. Hopefully we'll have be allowed to have more than 10 people on it. Hopefully we'll be well beyond this. Yes. <laughs> we hope so. Yeah, we hope so. Uh, C, consideration to approve a three-year contract for the Wine and Jazz Festival to be held at Camp Muffley. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And lastly, to consider request by the Friends of Chief for a letter of support and commitment for the Mountaineer Trail Network Authority's implement implementation grant application to the Appalachian Regional Commission's Power, power that's P-O-W-E-R, initiative. <laughs> Move for approval. Second. And properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Seeing no other new business, uh, we'll have reports from elected officials. Morning, Mark. Morning. Morning. Um, just as you guys got our information yesterday based on our, our schedule that we submitted for that, just as a reminder that beginning tomorrow, our office will be to the point where no walk-ins, but we're still doing business as usual. So the public can still do business with us. It's going to be through the phone, emails, text, fax, anything of that nature. So just wanted to remind the commission of that. Is there a provision that if it has to be done, do you make appointment or? Yeah, we, that's in, that was in our letter too. <coughs> okay. So there, yeah. there are things there that we would look at to explore for those type of options. Okay. And I don't know if I remember if you put a date certain that, that's ending or? Is no, right now ending? we're, we're It'll basically be for the rest of this month, for sure, okay. based on that, because most other areas are doing things through the month of March and the beginning part of April. So we're going to take it as day by day and see how it goes. And, you know, it gives us a chance to monitor the mail coming in and the effects of the number of the phone calls and stuff like that. But it's also there, too, like everyone else, is to protect the taxpayers and the staff also that are there. So we did a skeleton crew, you know, is how we're working it, so... And again, people need to know that they're available via phone. It's yeah, it's a, it, it's in the letter, it's in the paper this morning, it's okay. on our website, it's across there. We've got it all across the uh, courthouse posted. It's so. on the windows of the doors coming into. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. so that's I mean, my concern. It, it's there. You don't right. Use it, and that's why I wanted sure to present know. it here this morning too, just to get okay. another facet of getting it out there. So, is it on our website? Do you want it on their website? I think it needs to be on our website. I think what we need yeah, to do is Yeah, because we have, have it on ours, it would be good there. Yes. And have it, so that way people know. All right. Yeah, so any right. we'll we're, we're trying to get it covered, okay. as many accesses okay. as possible yeah. to get that message out there. I know I request that, or county clerk. To, yeah, yeah. And so let's there. do that. And that's already, that's already done. Yeah. So okay. we can have just the other office. Yeah, and then yeah, Renetta's got our letter there, too, that you can put on. I'll inform IT this afternoon. And we'll be in contact today. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be having And we will, of course, keep you posted as time goes for any changes and stuff of that nature. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other? Carrie, do you want to report on your office? I can. Our office is still operational. We did close our walk-in traffic to the general public, but the nature of our office uh, in being the document recorder for the entire county, uh, we want to make sure that our local attorneys, our banks, uh, those people who are involved in the real estate process is still able to function and, and be able to record their documents. So we are allowing uh, people uh, local attorneys to come in on an uh, by an appointment basis though if they have to send a runner for documents they will make arrangements with our office to do that we are still taking marriage uh, applications marriage licenses <laughs> and uh, estate and probate by appointment only all those can be made on our web page uh, we are asking that if you do make an appointment online 
Uh, we will be contacting you prior to that appointment to make sure that you have all of the proper paperwork that you need prior to making the trip in here and that you do meet the qualifications to actually come to our office being that you have not been been someplace where you could have potentially been exposed within the last 14 days uh, before you're coming in. So we are trying to do everything that we can to make sure that we are operational. We recognize that um, you know, the, the, one of the things that our office does is keeping everything running in the economy. So we want people to be uh, recording documents and doing all those kind of things because we did structure our staff differently. So we will be in the office from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. so that our staff members are not um, uh, being exposed to one another. We're working shift work and um, we're covering our bases there. I was on a conference call with the Secretary of State prior to this meeting about the upcoming election and everything is uh, on schedule to operate uh, the election. We are making some caveats to the absentee ballot process to allow all of those individuals who may uh, not be able to come out for fear of being exposed in a, in a, a large public setting that they can take advantage of the absentee ballot process. But we will still have early voting. We will still have election day on May 12th. But we will open it up for anybody who wants to take an absentee ballot to be able to get an absentee ballot. So, in the opinion of the Secretary of State and the clerks across the state, it's it's the opinion right now that May 12th election will still be occur at mm -hmm. that date. Uh, yes, the um, it, it's not really our opinion. They have reached. Uh, and been working with the Attorney General's office to seek a legal opinion about that. Uh, the primary election is a statewide election, so that's mandated by the state legislature. The legislature is not coming into special session to make any kind of changes to the election laws because they're under the same rules of operation about not having large gatherings of more than 10 people. So. Um, what I believe that the Attorney General is doing today is having a press conference with the Secretary of State to let the uh, public know um, what is transpiring because we have poll workers. Um, as you know, most of them are of advanced age and are in the group that is most susceptible to this virus. Uh, we are probably looking at this virus really becoming effective in this state around the time early voting is starting and then working toward election day. So that in lies a problem with having enough poll workers to work, uh, being able to train your poll workers because you have to train them in person and if you can't have more than 10 people in a room at mm -hmm. one time, that's an issue. Um, and then being if you do not have enough poll workers to work, how are you going to keep the precincts operational uh, on election day? So all of these issues have been discussed. They've been uh, being discussed. And one of the best options is for people to take advantage of absentee voting. They can apply for an absentee ballot, mail, email that to our office, and then we will mail you a ballot to your house, and then you can mail that back in. I noticed there was five states that have changed their primary yes. to June. Ohio was was to take effect yesterday, and then on Monday night they changed it to June. And there's one state that has one scheduled for May that I noticed that they changed it to June. So, but of course, as you as you indicated, absent an act of the legislature, there's no way it can be changed. No, uh, we are having another conference call at four o'clock, and as as all of you in this room know, it changes minute to minute. Yep by you know people having different discussions and trying to figure this out so that all may change if the legislature figures out how they can convene in a special session uh, and still comply with all the rules that may very well change but as of uh, a few minutes ago uh, the, pro the plan is to still have our early voting we will still have our election day uh, we will just be uh, trying to do the best that we can. And we are, we in Montague County are pushing absentee voting. So. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, is there any other report from elected official? Uh, 
Um, Mr. Smith, if you would care just simply to give a brief update, I know you're not an elected official, but I think this way it's easier to get word out on what we're doing with emergency services. Please. So uh, the commission's aware. Um, we met with Dr. Smith and all the chiefs of all the uh, first responding agencies, fire, EMS, and police, uh, the other day out at Mecca. Um, some minor changes are going to be seen within the emergency services here in Montague County. Um, the police departments uh, will be uh, stepping back on some of the response to the minor incidents that may be occurring. Um, such a, the example I give, if you call 911 and you're reporting that your child's bicycle has been stolen, uh, you may not see a police officer come to your house. They will instead call you because it's something they can take all the information over the phone and, and it, it's going to cut back on the exposure for our first responders. Um, obviously, police will respond to all major crimes and anything in progress. Um, our fire departments are going to be scaling back some of their operations. Uh, they will not be doing the home inspections at this time. Morgantown Fire Chief has uh, scaled that back until further notice. Um, they also may be stepping back on some of the medical responses that they go on. If it's not a life-threatening event, they may not be, the fire department may not be responding. Uh, it'll just be EMS coming out. Um, EMS is going to respond on all medical calls as in the past. Um, so it's, it's something that, that is not going to put the, the public in any jeopardy at all and that everybody's calls will still be answered. Um, at the 911 center, we've expanded our uh, protocol on questioning for medical calls. If you're calling in, um, you will be asked questions. If, if you're indicating that you may have a flu or fever type symptoms, they will uh, ask more questions. What, what has your travel been in the past 14 days? And it's all meeting the CDC uh, requirements. Um, and in this way, this information can be passed on to our first responders uh, coming out to your house. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I think the public, you know, should have all the information that, that we have available at this time. Okay. Uh, next, we'll have reports from county commissioners. Tom? Um, <clears throat> as I stated um, and posted, we're in, I wrote, we are in a time of change, and it is new to all of us. The rules and policies are changing hourly, and that's really what we're doing right now. We hear one thing, and then two hours later, there's, there's another change. With that being said, with the closing of school, that has sent a dilemma to this county, and I'm really pleased to say that the community is really supporting um, the school system and also the Pantry Plus More. To give an idea, we sent out on Monday 132 boxes to the most needy students. Um, and Thursday we're planning to do 200 and just to give you an idea at $35 a box you're looking around $7,000 just each time and right now whether it be four or six or eight weeks we don't know but the community has really stepped forward with donations and just to give you an idea uh, this morning Target called me I was allowed to go shopping at 7 o'clock this morning before the people were there and then they surprised us when we went with all of our stuff they bought everything. So it's unbelievable the people that, you know, are, are coming through. We are, and I do just want to say one more thing. If everything works out, we are planning to have a food drive through giveaway at St. Mary's Church in Star City. We are asking the people not to show up, please, until 10 o'clock. Um, the truck isn't even arrive until 1030, but we're just going to do a drive through there will be no unlimited contact. The only time the person will get out of the car will be to open the trunk. And hopefully that'll work. And hopefully this won't continue too long. But I'm, I'm concerned this looks like a four to six week situation. Thank you. Sean? Since the last meeting, uh, last Thursday, we had our development authority meeting. On Friday, we had staff meetings. Uh, this week has been pretty much consumed with COVID-19 updates and reports. Uh, I had a red team meeting on Monday, but it was preempted by uh, meetings we had 
Uh, I went to a briefing uh, with the uh, West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals that was updating uh, the judges on uh, what they were do to do with their trials. And then we had a conference call with all the elected officials to update. So we each were kind of aware of what's going on across inside our county. Uh, Tuesday, I had a breakfast meeting with the BOE president. Um, and then on, I sat in on the Joint Incident Command uh, call, the JIC call that Dr. Smith uh, organizes. And that's basically all the um, uh, first responders, the two hospitals, uh, every, every entity in our county uh, sits in uh, so they can kind of get updated on where we're at. And I appreciate uh, 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 our director, Jimmy Smith, is uh, uh, um, involved in that too. And he kind of helps keep, keep us updated on everything that's going on. Um, today's regular day of meetings. Uh, tonight I have my uh, Morgantown Area Partnership meeting, which I'll probably miss because it's on Wednesday. But the meeting's going to be held virtually, so a lot of our meetings are starting be to become virtual. Uh, tomorrow we have our MMPO meeting, which is also uh, going to be pretty much virtual, virtually. Uh, Friday we, we do have still have some staff meetings, and then we have a JIT call in the afternoon. I want to thank Dr. Smith uh, for all of his hard work and kind of organizing and being the kind of single go-to point of contact for our county. Um, I think it is working well. I think everybody's communicating and working together to kind of update. We're all kind of trying to figure out how to deal with this as we go along. Uh, and, but the most important thing is that we're communicating and we're updating each other. and. Uh, letting us you know uh, best practices you know uh, as as we've uh, I've never heard the word social distancing until this past now it's going to be kind of uh, something that defines this year uh, and um, I encourage as many of um, employees uh, I work for an employer that has kicked us out of the office and sent us home not this one but uh, so <laughs> they're practicing uh, remote teleworking it, it takes a while to get used to, but uh, it, it again, it's just just for the better. Um, they're also telling people when you go to the grocery stores, don't hoard everything. That they're going to keep restocking really? the grocery stores. Um, when someone goes and kind of hogs up, I haven't seen toilet paper in the store for about two weeks. Uh, you know, they're they're going to keep. There's no need to buy 12 gallons of, of milk and you know, eight eight dozen eggs they will keep stocking up so try you know think about your neighbor as you're you know taking off for your family and then try to think about your neighbor that also you know needs to go to the store and get their the, the things they need and, and basically all we can do is uh uh you know try avoid gatherings it's kind of weird as county commissioners that's all we do is meet uh we meet with people we meet with the public but we're we need to avoid that for a while and uh, we need to we need to take this seriously um and uh, that's, that's all I have to say. Just basically uh, stay well. Ed, could you mention what happened this morning at 9.15? I think that's kind oh, of interesting. Yes. I forgot yes. about that. Uh, thank you. Uh, this morning at 9.15, uh, we did have the Greene County commissioners reach out to us. And so we are going to, we were in communication on a conference call for about 15 minutes. And we will continue this. Uh, we've set it up to continue uh, beginning on a weekly basis so that we can uh, Mr. Smith already had been in communication with the 911 system uh, in Greene County so it'll be a continuing effort to stay in touch with this county as well as other counties it would behoove us I think to uh, begin to reach out to see that we can all work in concert during what this has happened uh, repeating what Sean said uh, it is I, I did go out yesterday. I did go to the grocery store. I actually went to a couple, and I did see some examples of what uh, Sean was saying. Um, it's it's not necessary. The, the The food is going to be there. That's just really something that you should think about, uh, and also think about your neighbor. Think about those who are possibly in need uh, of your assistance. Uh, you don't have to go over. Uh, all you have to do is pick up a phone, mm -hmm. uh, ask, uh, do you need something? Uh, I'm well. I'm, I started to say I'm young. I know I'm not uh, <laughs> but, since I'm in the risk group. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm healthy. 
and uh, I'm able to do things for other people. So in closing, I will uh, use the words of Ellen, be kind. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs>